First story. My girlfriend's toxic friends are encouraging her to open our relationship and start an OnlyFans account. So I exposed their cheating to their fiancés and dumped my girlfriend. And that's how I got new brothers. And she lost everyone. I've been with my girlfriend for just over a year. And overall, she's a nice person. But her friends are absolutely cancerous. The main ringleader has a kid and muscled her long-term boyfriend into an open relationship. She parties several times a week and asks other dudes while the pathetic, wami doormat of a boyfriend looks after their two-year-old. The other one routinely cheats on her fiancé and even effed one of my brothers in a bathroom stall the first time my friends and my girlfriend's friends hung out. They've pushed her into starting an OnlyFans and all sorts of other grotesque SHT. But my girlfriend justifiably tells them to kick rocks because she's in a relationship. This only results in them throwing, controlling boyfriend accusations my way. My girlfriend's last two boyfriends were complete deadbeats, one of whom was a recovering addict. So this is the only, normal relationship she's been in for the past five years. I knew it would only be a matter of time before she caved. You can't be around serial cheaters and dirtbags without dabbling with it yourself at some point. And I can't exactly tell her to cut off her childhood friends without some sort of resentment festering. So I did us both a favor and ended the relationship. She freaked out. But I just told her I was in a dark place and couldn't be in a relationship. I didn't have it in me to tell her it was because her friends are actual human toilets. This isn't the first girl I've broken up with because of their friends. Edit. Okay, so I've seen a lot of people ask why I don't just tell her the truth. But what would that accomplish exactly? I'm not planning on getting back with her and telling her that the reason I wanted to break up was because her toxic friends would only drive a wedge between them at a time when she needs all the support she can get. I get the whole, just tell her the truth thing. But that would just cause more harm if she thinks the people she thought she could turn to were the reason she's dealing with a breakup in the first place. Edit 2. A lot of you seem to think that once I told her the reason, she'd suddenly open her eyes and see her friends for what they were. That's not happening. She was around when most of the cheating and scummy SHT occurred. And she even lost her SHT at me once for suggesting, I tell the girl's fiancé. She's been friends with them since they were four six years old. Cutting them off would be next to impossible for her. Edit 3. Although my girlfriend never did anything directly to me, she'd lose her SHT and would side with them whenever I brought up her friend's questionable behavior. She wasn't an innocent bystander. She directly or indirectly lied on her friend's behalf and covered for them a bunch of times. Oh, Jen stayed over at my place. She just watched movies and drank with me and OP, etc. Keep in mind that some poor sap brought the girl. She always lied for a rough $10,000 engagement ring. She's not a poor victim, lol. Final edit. So I told the fiancé who was being cheated. I found a lot of incriminating SHT in my text conversations with my ex and a few damning photos. I got a hold of his number and sent him everything. He called me, and we had an hour-long conversation where I basically broke down the entire cheating timeline for him. She wasn't with us on the 14th. She was at XZY's place, etc. I've been waiting a long time to tell this guy that he was about to sign his life away to a serial cheater. And I deeply resent the fact that I had to stay quiet about this. Poor Effer broke down. It's hard listening to a grown man cry like that. He had his suspicions, but never had any real proof. It looks like the wedding's off, and his cheating ex fiance will need to start looking for a new place to live. I invited him out with me and my brothers this weekend because he met most of his friends through his fiance, and I'm 110% sure they'll all ditch him or try to gaslight him into reconciling things. He and the other guy were the real victims in this situation, not my ex. I don't care about the fallout. She and her friends can do their effing worst. The whole thing made me realize what a monstrous piece of SHT my ex was for covering this up for so long, and I'm disgusted at myself for being complicit. I wouldn't be telling her jacked. She and her effing toilet people friends deserve each other. Update. So after the original thread, I took a few people's advice and did the right thing by telling the fiancé who was being cheated on. And, oh boy, did things go absolutely effing insane. The fiancé basically demanded that my girlfriend's skew friend give the engagement ring back after he packed up her SHT and left it outside their apartment. A lot of their mutual friends basically turned on him for not wanting to work things out. But he stuck to his guns and, understandably, told them all to F off. They tried to make him out to be the bad guy for kicking her without notice, etc. Her family even threatened to sue him, effing lol, if he didn't reconsider but he paid for everything, so good luck. I took him out with me and my friends that weekend, like I said I would, and told him he could call me or my other brother if he ever needed someone to talk to. 
I can relate to the fiancé situation better than anyone else. So we've been talking quite regularly. We ran into his ex-fiancé brother that night, and things got heated. But her brother was quick to calm down once he realized my entire group of friends would have absolutely effing mauled him and his DC Ked friends if things got physical. He's funny and, overall, just a good guy. So he fits in perfectly with my group of friends. His fiancé, on the other hand, isn't doing so well. She accused my ex and the other scummy friends of encouraging her bad behavior and running her relationship. Their whole friend group is basically falling apart. The other babysitting boyfriend caught wind of the whole situation and finally grew some balls. Their relationship basically blew up after his girlfriend kept publicly defending her cheating friend. He moved out last I heard, so his girlfriend isn't going to be ditching her kid and partying anymore without paying for an overnight babysitter. I'm not really friendly with him, so I don't know the full details, but it looks like he's seeking greener pastures. My ex also lost her SHT and started blowing up my phone. I basically told her to eat SHT and blocked her number after she repeatedly accused me of trying to ruin her life, as if she were the victim of this whole thing. So she did the next best thing and took to social media to smear me. Basically, I resorted to the cliches controlling and abusing, but everyone just dogpiled on her and told her to shut the F up because it's pretty evident I was neither of those things during our relationship. To the people who called me out for my cowardice, for not telling the fiancé, I want to say thank you. I should have done it a long, long time ago, and I'm going to try my best to be there for him as much as humanly possible. Second story. OP breaks up with his girlfriend over a joke she made about poking holes in his condom to get herself pregnant. Now, his parents beg OP to reconcile, only to find out she already is pregnant with his ex. My 23M ex 25F and I were together for just under 8 months, and like, we clicked. We got along like a house on fire from the moment we met. We had a lot in common. From our morals to our goals to our taste in music. My family. Loves her. Probably more than they do me. Mom wanted a daughter so bad, she couldn't stand it growing up four sons before she gave up. It was probably three months ago, now that we had been on the couch, while I watched a movie, and she scrolled TikTok. Not a TikTok hate post. Scrolling can be fun. I'm just more of a YouTube guy. Speaking of showing me videos, she showed me one of a man holding his son and dancing to a song. She laughed and said something about how good I would look as a dad, which was pretty weird considering, as far as I knew, both of us were childless by choice. God knows I am. I tried to take it as a joke and mentioned that it was, too bad, so sad. She would never know. I thought she would respond with something about how there's nothing sad about avoiding it or something. She has never given me an indication before that she wants children. And she started giggling this evil giggle and said something like, I don't know, it only takes one broken condom. In this like sing-song voice that I'm not even joking, it gave me effing goosebumps. The implication was clear in her tone. Like, was she making a joke about poking holes in condoms? To me? For real. I tried to laugh it off, but it made me so effing uncomfortable. Like skin-crawling levels of skeeved the f out. And after that, my sexual interest in her was entirely gone. It's like I processed her as a threat or something. To be entirely honest, my libido in general is entirely effing gone. Still hasn't come back. It feels like it's hibernating or something until the scary lady is gone. I know what you're thinking. Why didn't you communicate? And I tried, like a couple times, but when she said, Oh my god, I was kidding you, big baby. I never denied that the joke was about that. I dropped it and stopped bringing it up. I didn't think it was worth the fight at that point. Because while I still do care about her a lot, I do not feel comfortable even going to sleep around her. And there is no way that is going to mesh with a healthy relationship. If there's no trust, there's no relationship. That's how I feel, right? So I broke up with her. And when I told her, I said it was because I really needed to focus on myself. I didn't see a point in telling her then. It would have just pissed her off. As is, she seemed to take it in stride, not angry or concerningly upset. So that's good. My family is more heartbroken than I am, and I haven't been great. They're begging me to reconsider. Not that I would. Especially considering there's no way in hell I'm telling them anything. My mother would be beside herself, thinking, grandchildren, please, son, give me grandchildren. But more than that, I know even my dad, who doesn't care about grandchildren and recognizes that he's more likely to get them from my younger siblings, would call me out for overreacting. So they got the same story she did. It's frustrating because I know it's no big deal in a joke, but it has also been upsetting or sad. I know I'm overreacting, but in the moment, it felt like my only option, and I really don't want to take it back, even if I am.
I know you may think I'm paranoid, and I probably am, but I just could not stop thinking about it. After she told that joke, I thought it was going to end one way or another, so I'm glad it ended on decent terms, instead of trying to stay and fix everything until I hated her. Sorry, I'm talking a lot, but like I said, there's no one to talk to about this because being unreasonable in real life is like a criminal arrest, and I'm trying to avoid another of those particular black marks on my reputation. Anyway, I am off to research vasectomies because I will not be entering another relationship or becoming active with anyone until then. My ex made a broken condom joke, and I spiraled so hard that I ended the relationship. But that's really embarrassing, so I half-heartedly claimed it was for self-improvement instead. Comments Birch Beer is awesome. First of all, you are young, and relationships aren't always going to work out long term. Also, since you had such a strong reaction to the joke, it seems like the vasectomy route is going to be your best path going forward. I'm of the firm belief that if you don't want kids, definitely don't risk having them. You will be okay in the long run. Stick by what's right for you. Maximus Ultra. If you're 100% child-free as a dude, vasectomy is the legit end game. But you have to do the three months of condoms or abstinence, but also need to beat the SH Meat 20X to clear the mag. Absolute Madwoman. One of the secrets of life is that you can break up with someone for any reason. Update. One and a half months later. Well, I never thought I would update, but I have one. I thought I had lost the password to this account and everything, but it was saved in the notes on my laptop. This isn't much of an update, but I can say that I did end up telling my friends more about the breakup after I found out my ex is trying for a baby with her new boyfriend. Also her ex. Also, I wasn't stalking her to get this information. I live in a small town, and two of my friends came to me and told me. They said they didn't want me to find out from someone else, but I didn't really care outside of the relief that now I was sure that she wasn't pregnant during the breakup, something that had been giving me nightmares. They calmed down. Apparently, both of them thought I would react badly to the information and spiral or something. Whatever. I know a lot of people said I had taken a joke and overreacted. She was a cruel-hearted and evil misogynist trying to control her body and everything else. But this just confirmed to me that she was never joking. I mean, it's been a little over two months since the breakup, and she's trying to have a baby. I'm not angry at her anymore, not at all. In fact, I'm happy for her, because if this is what she wants, it's good for her. I just wish she could have told me sooner, so as not to waste either of our time. I've been working on getting a vasectomy, but as of now, it hasn't happened yet. But as I mentioned in the last post, I won't be sexually or romantically active to any degree with anyone but my hand until that's completed. I think I'm lightly traumatized this is a joke. You can laugh. What else? Ooh, I'm thinking about getting a new dog. I have nothing else to add here. But thanks anyway. Comments. Granny Weatherwax. You know what? I don't think you broke up over a joke. I think you broke up over a threat. If my partner joked about getting me pregnant by effing with my birth control, and I knew they wanted to be a parent, I would have a really hard time trusting them again. Especially without an earnest apology and a straightforward conversation where they acknowledged why the joke would be scary. Alien Life Form 666. Absolutely, 100%. That was a threat. She was effectively telling him that she could arrange to get pregnant if she wanted to. And there's nothing he could do about it. That's breakup territory. Okay budget 1D724. Interesting perspective. I've been begging for an IUD, but have made similar jokes in the past, fully anticipating that he would be wearing a condom having a plan be effective, or having an abortion as the worst-case scenario. I think getting a vasectomy if you don't want children is important. I stopped traditional birth control for health reasons or disorganization, but I always let my partner know. OP. Yeah, I explained it in the last post to a degree, but I didn't really get into my medical anxiety. I have it a lot. And even when I made my last post, I knew I was going to have to get one because I realized trusting someone else with my future no matter how trustworthy they may seem, isn't enough. I have never and never intend to have sex without a condom. Even after the vasectomy, every woman I've been with actually has expressed that they are also childless and are on birth control of some kind. I am not into taking chances. I wouldn't mentally be able to handle having a child, and I would be a terrible father. I knew it was my time to take it into my own hands after last time, but I was still extremely nervous, to the point where I was considering becoming celibate just to avoid the possibility altogether. It was actually the men and wives of men on Reddit who reached out after my last post and explained that they understood the nerves and that they were natural, but that it really wasn't as scary or painful as it sounds. 
I am very thankful for that. Because it helped me get up the balls pun, not intended. Bring it up with my doctor. And start the process. Some even gave me advice on how to deal with the healing process. Which I have fully taken under advisement. I'm hoping that afterward I feel the same way they do. I was confused and frustrated with myself as to why I didn't do it sooner. Third story. OP's abusive wife demands to have another baby despite both agreeing to never get pregnant after her first pregnancy was a nightmare. Two years ago, my wife gave birth to our baby boy. He is wonderful, and we both love him very much. My wife had an absolutely horrible pregnancy experience. She was in good health before the pregnancy, as was I. Neither of us were athletes or anything, but we casually exercised and were conscious of what we ate. But we weren't on strict diets or anything. Despite being in good health, her pregnancy was awful. She threw up almost every day for the first two trimesters. Her legs and feet became shockingly swollen. She developed diabetes and high blood pressure. Her liver and kidneys became at risk of being damaged. She had on and off anemia issues, and a whole book of other random things that I can't remember all of. All of this was despite working so hard with her doctors to mitigate the issues. She was put on many medications, given diet plans, and given low-stress stretching exercises. She had to stop working in the third month because of how sick she became. I helped her all that I could. My entire life outside of work revolved around caring for her. I made all her meals, which became increasingly restrictive as more complications arose and as she was put on and taken off various medications. I bathed her, dressed her, cleaned up her vomit multiple times a week, changed so many bed sheets because she would sweat profusely or accidentally pee herself, sometimes because she was in too much pain to get up, sometimes because she couldn't realize she needed to pee, cleaned her poop a few times, and helped her wipe herself. At times, I felt like a live-in nurse for a severely disabled person, if that helps paint a picture of it. It was awful and dirty but I knew that I needed to do all of this for her, and I wanted to do all I could to alleviate her suffering. But the worst part was the change in her mental state. I could have done all of this with a smile on my face if she had not become so cruel and violent during the pregnancy. She had previously never, ever been abusive in any way. We were loving. When we had disagreements, we never even raised our voices. We sat and talked. She completely changed while she was pregnant. She yelled at me, swore at me called me every slur known to man, threw things at me, hit me, told her parents I didn't love her, broke doors, shattered glasses and plates, and threatened to kill me. I'd serve her food in bed, and she'd throw it on the ground if she didn't like it. After doing this for the third time with oatmeal, I told her I wouldn't serve her oatmeal anymore because I was tired of having to spend hours on my knees digging dried oats out of the carpet. She exploded at that because oatmeal was one of the few things that didn't make her nauseous at the time, and she threw a coffee mug at my face which gave me a black eye. This kind of thing became constant and increasingly worse as time went on. After giving birth, she stayed in the hospital for almost two weeks, at her doctor's request, because she had so many complications. I took the baby home after the first week. She eventually came home and had some issues with postpartum depression. But thanks to the close observation of her doctor, it was addressed relatively quickly, and she was put on medication. So here we are, two years later and the woman that she was while pregnant doesn't exist anymore. She is back to her old self. She still has some lasting, but minor physical issues from the pregnancy. But overall she is healthy again, mentally and physically. I won't lie, it took me some time to love her again. After I took the baby home, there was a part of me that hoped she wouldn't come back from the hospital. I had no positive feelings for her at that time. I slept in a different room for four months afterward. We didn't go to counseling because we just didn't have the time. But eventually, after many talks, I realized that the woman she was with while pregnant was gone. She is extremely sorry, regrets everything, and can't explain why she did what she did. But she is disgusted with who she was. And around our son's first birthday, we agreed that she would never get pregnant again due to how dangerous her pregnancy was for her, and how abusive she became toward me. Our relationship is good and loving now, and we both love our son very much. We are happy again. But earlier this week, she mentioned she wouldn't mind having another kid in an offhand comment. This obviously shocked me. We had agreed to never do it again. I didn't address the comment at the time, but over the next day I kept thinking about it, and that night I asked her what she meant by that comment. She said she'd been thinking about it, and she decided she wanted to try for a daughter and suggested going off her birth control. I probably didn't handle this as well as I could have, but I just stared at her and said, No. She said, What do you mean, no? 
You don't just get to say no. I said, no, I'm not doing that again. We had an agreement. I will not even consider the thought of you being pregnant again. She started crying, saying it's not fair. We have a boy, and she wants a girl too. I explained that we can't predict if it will be a girl. What happens if it's another boy? And what happens if you die from another pregnancy? She wouldn't continue talking, and she just cried. I went to sleep in another room. That was Tuesday night. I've been sleeping in the living room, and we basically haven't said more than 50 words to each other since then. I don't know what to do. I don't know where this is coming from. It's honestly insane. She could literally die from another pregnancy, and I will not be her slave and punching bag for nine months again. Plus, we have a toddler now. If she were to get pregnant, I wouldn't be able to give her the level of care I did the first time. And if she became abusive again, she could direct it at our son too, and I wouldn't tolerate a single instance of that. The very moment she tried to become cruel to him, I would take him, and she'd never see us again. I'm lost, and I'm mad. I feel lied to, betrayed, or like a fool, like I've been conned or taken advantage of. All the bad feelings I had toward her from the pregnancy are bubbling up. I don't know what I feel or how to talk to her. Edit. I'm not having SX until this is resolved, so you can all stop posting about that. As I said in another comment, I don't have any sexual appetite for her at this time anyway because of how sad, angry, upset, or frustrated I am. So I have no problem pausing SX. Update. TL Doctor of the Original. My wife had a medically dangerous first pregnancy, which required me to basically be her live-in nurse, cook, and maid for six months, during which she also became increasingly mean and violent toward me. After birth, she returned to normal over time. We mutually agreed to never get pregnant again due to the medical dangers to her as well as the change in her mentality and how she acted toward me during that time. Last week, over a year after making this decision, she said she wants to try for another child, specifically a daughter. Fight ensues. Thank you to everyone for their kind words and for helping me think through how to address this with her. To everyone saying I should have gotten a vasectomy when we decided not to get pregnant again. I guess that is a valid criticism. It honestly didn't occur to us because she takes hormonal birth control for more than just birth control. She takes it primarily because her periods are normally very heavy and unpleasant, and the birth control greatly minimizes those aspects for her. So, my wife and I were able to talk the day after that post. Unfortunately, it didn't go very well. Before I left for work, I hugged her, said I'm sorry for immediately saying no, and said that I wanted to talk through it after work and hear all her thoughts about it. She agreed, both said I love you, and things seemed calm and positive as I left. That night, I asked her why she changed her mind about another baby, and what she was thinking overall. She basically said she's getting older, her window for another baby is closing, and it made her realize she wanted at least one more, and that she also really wants a girl. I asked what happens if it's not a girl, and she said in that case we would try again. I asked if she remembered the last pregnancy, how dangerous it was how her kidneys were permanently damaged from it, how she was so sick that I had to basically be her live-in nurse, and that if she got pregnant again, she could have total kidney failure and die. She said she's not worried because she knows God will protect her and provide what we need. That really threw me off. I don't think I have ever heard her speak about a God like that at any point in our entire six-year relationship. We are not religious people. I don't think we have even been in a church together. Our wedding wasn't even in a church, and we don't own a Bible. The last time I was in a church was at my mom's funeral nine years ago. After the God comment, I didn't know what to say. I was just shocked, and I laid my head on the back of the couch and looked up at the ceiling. She asked what was wrong. I said that this is a lot, that she's saying the opposite of what we had previously agreed, and that I don't think I can change my mind on this because I don't want her to get deathly sick, and that I don't think I can go through the abuse again. I did use the word abuse, which maybe I shouldn't have because it set her off. She started ranting. Abuse? What abuse? You're accusing me of abuse. I reminded her of the coffee cup, throwing food on the floor, the name calling, the slandering of me to friends and family, and multiple other incidents. But she just kept talking over me. You really think that's who I am? I want another baby, and this is what you think about. I said yes, it is what I think about because it's what happened last time. Everything just fell apart from there. She was yelling and crying. I couldn't get a word in calling me a bunch of names and saying that I don't love her. I can't understand what it's like for her. Why can't I just give her this one thing? It's what God wants for us. It's God's plan. And on and on and on like this. I couldn't calm her down or convince her to go to bed. 
She was following me around the house and crying. One thing that really concerned me is that she said something like, Loving our son is much easier for me because he looks like me. That she can't see any of herself in him. And it isn't fair. And that's why she wants a daughter. She made it sound like she doesn't love our son and could only love a daughter that looks like her. Finally, all the noise woke our kid up. And I told her I had to take him on a drive to get him back to sleep. I drove around for an hour, put him back to bed, and she was awake but locked in our room. So I slept in the living room again. She left early the next morning, and I later found out she went to her mom's house. She was gone the whole day, so the kid and I had the day together. We eventually went to my older brother and Sil's both mid-thirties house, and I kind of vented to them. I was very surprised to hear Sil say, Yeah, we've been waiting for this, and that it took longer than expected. My brother agreed. They basically said that they've seen this in her for as long as we've been together and were concerned but unsurprised with her behavior during the pregnancy. And that the pregnancy let the genie out of the bottle. That who she was at that time is who she really is. They see her slipping more into that behavior every time we hang out. And they're concerned. I told my wife that Kiddo and I were staying at my brother's last night. She never replied. And that's where I still am today. I took a sick day today and probably will tomorrow. I'm lucky my boy is such an easygoing kid. 90% of the day he is giggly and happy and loves to give hugs. For me, he honestly relieves more stress than he creates. And luckily, my brother and sister can't get enough of him. I think I might have to divorce my wife. I've been talking to my brother about it and mentioning marriage therapy. But he said to be careful because therapy could just make my wife hide her ways for long enough to get pregnant again. He says she is very manipulative and is relieved that I'm finally starting to see it. I really didn't think she was this kind of person. But I guess I've been willfully ignorant this whole time. As some of you said in the last post, I think I've been lying to myself. Brother and Sil say, she didn't go back to normal after the birth. She just dialed it back a little. And I told myself it was normal. I feel lost. I think I need to get divorced. I don't want to. But I think the only other option is to stay with her. Which I also don't want to do. I wish I could stay with my son at my brother's forever. And never have to acknowledge the real world again. Thank you for watching the video. If you are interested in listening to these kinds of stories, we've got more in store for you. Simply subscribe to our channel, hit the like button, and share it with your friends.